So I thought, what company can I take a look at for this week's FTSE show episode that's going to be interesting, that's going to be uh, something a bit more different? Well, how about a travel agent company that used to make bombs for the Nazis? Want to know what stocks to buy in 2022? Then rise up, sir, and join the fastest growing online investment club in the UK, achieving over 17% annual average return since 2014. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the FTSE Show. My name is Chris Chillingworth. Hope you are well. This is the show dedicated to the analysis of UK stocks. Um, Listen, the markets are falling right now. They've been falling for a while. For some stocks, uh, certainly some stocks that I've been following, they've been falling since September 2021. And it just seems like the rest of the market is starting to catch up in so much that it's falling as well. Uh, and uh, listen, I'm seeing what we tend to see in these conditions uh, yet again. We saw it back in 2008 and 2009. We saw it in... 2020 when the pandemic first hit now we're seeing it again people panicking because the stock market is falling how about we start thinking about opportunities to buy which stocks out there provide great opportunities for us right now they do exist there are companies out there that right now look like a fantastic bargain in terms of they're smashing profits they're they're, they're reaching profit profit records um, and the price, the price to buy those shares is a bargain. Those companies exist. And I believe now is the time to start looking for those opportunities. Uh, I've been saying this to my members now for, I don't know, months. My members are buying stocks up left, right and center right now, which I'm very proud of. Um, it shows that the educational side of what I do is coming through, that people are listening to what I say, which is awesome. Um, and look, back in 2008, uh, everyone was saying, look, this time it's different. This is the banking system might not exist. We might be losing the banking system. Like this has never happened before. This is this is different this time. Well, the market's recovered in a couple of years. I mean, go back to the charts, you'll see 2010, 2011, many of the great stocks, not all stocks, but many of the really, really good companies, the good growth stocks, the good investments, they recovered within a year or two. Uh, they were back to their pre-crash loss, uh, pre-crash prices uh, within a couple of years and then went on to to go far, far past where they were pre-crash. Uh we, we saw it in 2020. Everyone was saying, this time it's different. This is a pandemic. Like, we haven't had a pandemic like this that's killing people left, right and centre. Well, okay, that might be true, but the stock market is the same. Uh, it's run by human beings who effect <laughs> effectively panic when these kind of events happen. Did the markets recover? Yeah, over to, to 2020 to uh, September 2021, they went well above their pre-crash price. Uh, we're in another bear market again now. We've seen a drop in the market. So on certain stocks that I'm watching, we've seen 50% declines in the share price. Um, a share price is not indicative of the value of an investment though, in so much that uh, you can have a great company that's making record profits, that's doing everything right, but their share price is down 50%. And it's not because of their performance that the share price is down. It's because of investor sentiment, it market sentiment, macroeconomic conditions, things going on in blooming Ukraine. It's these opportunities that we want to be jumping on because these are wonderful companies that I was buying pre-crash. More than happy to spend the money on some of these stocks. Now I can get those same stocks 50% cheaper. And this is a company making record profits now. So when we fast forward five to 10 years, which companies are going to be the companies that are leading the way? Who are the companies that are going to be making 500% return in the next five to 10 years? It's those companies. History has proven it. And we're going to be there again. So, you know, now is a wonderful time to buy uh, certain stocks. That is the trick. We're going to take a look at a company called TUI this week, a travel agent company. Now, listen, 
I looked into this company obviously as part of the research that I do and the analysis that I did and um, I want to tell you a few things about this company that I think it might surprise you. This is a German company providing leisure and tourism services known as Tourism Union International. That's the actual name of the company, hence the TUI. Um, so is it TUI? Is it TUI? Who knows? You choose. Um, <laughs> this company were originally called Pressaug. Pressaug AG. A German mining company. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was a German mining company originally. We're going all the way back to the 1920s here. Originally started out as a German mining company, but merged into tourism and leisure in 1997, as you do, you know, it's a natural progression. You start off mining for coal and you get into travel and tourism, obviously. Uh, they acquired 50% of Thomas Cook in 1998, sold them mid 2000, uh, in 2002 renamed to TUI. Uh, had a merger with First Choice Travel in 2007. That was a, a UK company. Uh, fully or partially owns travel agencies, hotels, cruise ships, shops, and five European airlines. They've got the largest aeroplane fleet in Europe with 130 planes in service. Uh, the company's largest shareholder is a gentleman named Alexei Mordashov, a Russian gent who is a friend of Vladimir Putin and as a result of that was put under sanctions in March 2022. So, yeah, not so good. Um, in May 20... Right. Okay. In May 2022, German TV company ZDF Magazine Royale... Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, controversially found Pressaug AG, the original company behind TUI, dates back to 1920s, right? This company, this German TV company, found that Pressaug AG provided bombs for the Nazi party in World War II. So... We've got a German mining company <laughs> that's transitioned into tourism and leisure and going way back to the World War II. Uh, so back in the 40s, this is a company that was providing bombs for the Nazi party. There's a bit of history for you. Um, but it doesn't end there. They also used to provide chemicals for Saddam Hussein. Uh and also helped to build a, a chemical bomb factory for Colonel Gaddafi in Libya. So, you know, um, they went to TUI's PR team for comment. And TUI said, we didn't know anything about this history of the company. Hmm. Interesting. But should we invest in TUI? Well, let's take a look at the vertical analysis. So, uh, revenue has not really gone anywhere since 2013 to 2019. So let's go up to pre-pandemic. Uh, 18.4 billion in revenue, ranging all the way up to 18.9 billion by 2019. Obviously, it had its ups and downs in between. But generally speaking, we didn't really see the company grow or, or progress in terms of the revenue that it could bring in. Then the pandemic hit and the travel and, travel and, uh, and, and leisure sector just got demolished, got obliterated. Um, it still survives to this day, of course. So it's not quite obliterated, but it's in trouble. And in 2020, uh, they made a revenue of 8 billion, just shy of 8 billion. In 2021, 4.7 billion. So yeah, that's not looking good, is it? Uh, from, from nearly 19 billion down to 4.7 billion, that's gonna hurt. Then we can take a look at the uh, gross profit percentage is what I wanna look at next. So this is the percentage of the revenue that this company gets to keep as essentially gross profit. Now we've still got other expenses and things like that to come off it, uh, off this figure. But from early, early in the process of the accounts, how much gross profit is this company keeping? Well, historically speaking, leading up to 2019, this is a company that we're making, keeping hold of about 11 or 12% of their revenue. 
as gross profit. That's a bad start. Let me tell you now that's a bad start because that doesn't really give you much. Bear in mind, you've still got the company expenses to come out. You've got the taxes to come out. You've got the interest on debt to come out. You've got other costs that have got to come out of this and you're already down to just holding on to 11, 12%. Now, some investors will look at that and think, well, 11, 12% of 19 billion is still a lot of money. And you're right, it is. But this is relative to the company. So you'll see what I mean when we get to the profit section, uh, or how this can really adversely affect the company. Then in 2020 and 2021, obviously that revenue drop off, the cost of sales went down, but nowhere near as much as the revenue went down which is quite typical uh, of these the last two years with the way a lot of companies were affected. Uh, the revenues come down, but there's still a huge amount of expenses that you can't just cut off. So uh, as a result of that, we're talking about a gross loss in 2020 of nearly 2 billion and a gross loss in 2021 of 1.2 billion. Um, that's not, not, not good, obviously, um, but it's it's those two years that really crippled this company. You're going to see why as we go deeper down into this business. So let's take a look at the expenses. I don't really care about the monetary expenses. I want to look at the expense percentage as a percentage of the gross profit. Historically speaking, going back to 2013 to 2019, uh, we're looking at a company that's making, uh, spending about 69% of uh, its gross profit on expenses. That's okay. That's on the high side. It's not too bad. It's not going to cripple the company too much. Um, but it could be lower. It, it would be very helpful if it was lower. Unfortunately, the expenses are quite high. Uh, and as you can see in 2020 and 2021, um, that was a big chunk of that gross profit. I mean, they're already at a loss by that point anyway. But then to take off another 1.3 billion in expenses in 2020, yeah, I mean, go, let's go down to the operating profit of this company on the bottom row here. Uh, look at 2020. They lost 3.3 billion. That's a loss of 3.3 billion. In 2021, a loss of 2 billion. Uh, prior to coronavirus, prior to the pandemic, this was a company that were making uh, about 704, between 400 and 700 million a year, depending on which year you choose. Uh, since 2018, these numbers have been dropping and uh, it'll be interesting to look at the charts in a moment and look at 2018 onwards and see what effect that might have had on the share price. Let's have a look at the earnings then. So we've got our operating profit then taken from the bottom row of the last slide, added to the top of this slide. Uh, we've got finance expenses. This is really interesting. So this is the interest that you're going to pay on debt, essentially. There's other things involved as well. It's not quite so clear cut, but this is the interest essentially that you're paying on any debts you've got. Take a look at 2019, 2020, 2021. So we've gone from 51 million a year on interest on debt up to 286 million to getting close to half a billion. Half, a, let's call it 440 million. 440 million a year now being spent on interest on debt. So you want to be a company then that's making a heck of a lot more than that in profit. If you're going to be paying 440 million a year on just the interest on your debt, that's not even paying back the debt. It's just paying the interest off the debt. So, yeah, now you start to look at TUI and their operating profit of minus two billion or even let's look at it in a, with a kind of rose tinted glasses kind of point of view in 2019, making 440 million. Well, if they were making 440 million in 2022 or 2023, let's say, you know, they managed to get back to their 2019 level. Well, they'll cover the interest on debt and that'll be it. There's no profit left. Uh, so how they pay off any debt that they have outstanding, that's going to be tricky. Um, we've got sale of assets, nothing to really report there. We've got other income, which is who knows what that is. 365 million came in in 2020. Uh, no idea what that could be. Some annual reports will put a little asterisk in there and you can find in the small print what it was. Others don't. So it's very difficult to know what that could be. Um, then you've got taxes and then reported profits and true profits. So essentially uh, true profits are reported profits minus any extraneous income or extraneous costs. And as you can see, this company from 2019 were making 235 million in profit 
in 2020 made a 3.5 billion loss and then in 2021 a 2.4 billion loss historically speaking from 2013 to 2019 this is a company making about one one and a half percent profit margin a year that's a problem the reason why one and a half percent profit a year is a problem is because whilst that one and a half percent may sound like a lot of money to a company when you're looking at a company that's making 19 billion revenue a year uh yeah it might sound like a lot of money 235 million but if you're a company that size of 19 billion revenue and you want to grow that company you want to expand the business you want to do something exciting you want to uh, acquire other businesses bolt them on grow in some way to be able to help the share price to expand well one percent is not going to cut it you can't really do much with one percent you don't have enough there to do anything meaningful with and this is the same problem that we see with bp with tesco with these big companies that are making billions but they can't grow because they're only making a very small percentage profit if any profit you know you look at tesco if they have a profitable year it's a good year uh a lot of years they break even or even make a small loss but any company making one percent profit a year is not going to have anything to reinvest into that business to be able to grow it to where they want to be that's a bad sign for share price growth if we want to see share price growth we need to be uh, looking at companies making far more than one percent profit margin a year it just doesn't give them anything to go on obviously then 2020 2021 we're looking at 50 percent uh, profit percentage uh, loss look at the debt analysis oh okay this is where it gets painful so we've got true profits across the top cool we've got short-term borrowings through the middle not so bad but bear in mind we're looking at 900 million in 2021 look at the long-term borrowings so we 2019 2.4 billion then to 3.7 billion in 2020 then 5.6 billion in 2021 this is long-term debt outstanding so bolt that onto your short-term debt you're looking at 6.5 billion in outstanding debt as you can see from the earnings to debt ratio the debt has always been far too high a level for the amount of earnings this company are making so they were already in a downward spiral here they were already biting off more than they can chew in terms of borrowing that I, I would imagine what's happened is they've been forced into that situation uh, certainly through the pandemic uh, bear in mind the losses they've been incurring they've had to borrow to stay alive but now they find themselves in a very difficult position why because let's roll back this is a company making true profits in 2019 of 235 million let's just say they get back there I don't think it's going to be 2022 maybe by 2023 when people are traveling a lot more and everything's back to normal if it gets there by 2023 i honestly don't know but let's say 2023 they get back to 235 million profit so 2019 level right well now not only do they have 6.5 billion in debt that needs to be repaid but they've also got 440 million a year on the interest on that debt so straight away you can see the problem that they might have here hopefully uh, the profits that are coming in are not going to pay off the interest on the debt they're certainly not going to pay off the 900 billion that's due very soon and it's probably going to take a hell of a long time before they're able to pay off that 5.6 long-term debt 5.6 billion long-term debt i honestly if if we find out in 2023 uh that tui tui did not survive i will not be surprised because this is a problem <laughs> right um let's take a look at equity so we've got the value of all their assets added together on a year-by-year -year basis then we've got the value of all their liabilities added together on a year-by-year -year basis then your net worth is essentially the difference so if you were to liquidize liquidize liquefy 
Not sure. If you were to uh, turn all the assets into liquid liquid cash, right? So you were actually sitting on 14.1 billion uh, and you needed to pay off the liabilities and see what's left in the company. Uh, in 2021, that would be minus 420 million. So if you were to take all the assets and pay off all the liabilities, you still wouldn't pay off the liabilities. You'd still have 420 million to find from somewhere. That is awful. Uh, as an investor, I want to see a company growing. I want to see a company that's, that's growing and building up. Well, uh, they were kind of doing that up to 2019. But obviously, then the pandemic's come in and it's just killed them. It's ruined the business because now they're in a position where their liabilities outweigh their assets. So now they've got a negative net worth. They're in negative equity. So, yeah, uh, that's that's not good. Trading today at £1.40 a share. How can I put a price on this company? The answer is I can't. Uh, I can't tell you how much would be cheap for this company because I wouldn't pay a penny for these shares. Bear in mind, there's a company that right now are losing billions every year. They've shown no uh, evidence. They've not posted any profitable years since then. So again, I want to see profitable years. I want to see them get back to profit before we can even consider what we'd be willing to pay for a share. Uh, so, And then you've got the negative equity. You've got the debt issues. You've got the interest on debt issues. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy any shares. I couldn't even, even if they were priced at one pence a share, I'd say it's a major risk. I wouldn't, wouldn't spend anything on these shares, unfortunately. So you know, you can see where this is going, but um, interesting nonetheless. Uh, so let's round this up then. So this is a low naught to two percent profit margin per year company heading into uh, the pandemic. Obviously, since then they've been making major losses. Liabilities outweigh assets by 420 million pounds worth of value. They've got 6.5 billion in outstanding debt, which is approximately based on their record profit year of 2017. It would still take them, if they were earning that much money, they would still take them 12 years to pay off this debt. So they are massively bought, biting off more than they can chew. I mean, there's no signs that they'll ever be able to pay this debt off. Um, and it makes you wonder, doesn't it, where these companies that are lending, these lenders are lending all this money to a company that have got no profit and their, their industry is destroyed. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a massive leap of faith, surely, for these companies. Um, we've got the company's largest single shareholder, Alexei Mordashov, a friend of Vladimir Putin, has been put under sanctions in March 2022. We've obviously got this German TV uh, discovery in May 2022. These guys used to make bombs for the Nazis. So let's not forget that. Uh, and then in June 2022, the CEO has now resigned. So this all looks like a recipe for disaster, do we not think? Perhaps? Do we not think this is a, um, yeah, not not good? Uh, as an investor, um, I would not be uh, particularly excited about what we've got going on here. Um, let's take a look at the chart then. So, yeah, I mean, as you can see, 2017 was their great year. This was the year they posted their record numbers. Things were looking great. Then from 2018 is when the decline started to happen in the numbers. And that's precisely when we've started to see the share price fall. We've seen it fall from £9.20 a share up to, I mean, the, the pandemic was what? February 2020 when the market started to really plummet and, and people got scared. Let's call it January. So we're talking about prior to the pandemic, it had fallen from 9 20 to 5 20 a share. Now that is based on performance for sure. Uh, we saw it seen in the numbers there that the year after year numbers were going down from 2017 onwards. Then the pandemic came in and it's just knocked them for six. There's been a small recovery uh, in 2021. And then obviously with uh, the Ukraine thing, probably the Russian uh, gentleman who has been uh, sanctioned uh, and all this kind of news. It's all gone downhill for them. They're now trading at one pound thirty-eight pence per share. They are close to their all-time low in terms of share price. Is this company a bargain? I would say absolutely not. I would say that 
I wouldn't even buy this company for 20 pence a share personally. Uh, I'd rather spend my capital on something that's more likely to do something. I can't say that this company will not recover. Uh, I don't know these things. All I can say is looking at the data, it doesn't look good. So where do we think this company are probably going to reside on the leaderboard? Let's take a look. Uh, oh yeah, bottom. Uh, <laughs> minus 145, the worst score we've had on the show in season two, possibly one of the worst scores we've seen since I started doing this show. Uh, and you know, you can understand why this is a company that's not in good shape. Uh, and like I say, in 2023, we might be hearing the news that TUI, TUI don't exist anymore, uh, or have gone bankrupt or something, or who knows. But um, I would not be surprised if we hear that in the next couple of years based on the financial uh, health of this business. So I would like to uh, grow the FTSE show, turn it into something bigger and better. I've got some cool ideas of things I want to do on this show. Um, but what I would like to happen is for, if you're watching, uh, to leave a comment underneath the video and let me know if there's any FTSE companies you would like me to analyze. I'll take a look at those comments and I'll make a decision later down the line on future episodes. But it'll be cool to hear if there's any particular companies, FTSE companies, that you'd be interested in, in seeing in future episodes. So please leave a comment underneath if there's anything that you'd like to see. Um, and also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Uh, about 50% of people who watch this show are not subscribed. And that's quite common, I believe. My understanding is that's quite common for YouTube, uh, but it would be cool if a few more people could sign up and subscribe and we can maybe turn that down a bit to maybe 40, 30%. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope it's been enjoyable and entertaining. And uh, yeah, if you're into Nazis or you're a fan of Saddam Hussein, maybe this is a stock for you. However, for me, not interested, uh, won't be buying any shares anytime soon. And I probably wouldn't recommend you do that either.